Hi everyone, I'm having a slight uh, issue putting my uh, second screen to work, but I'll fix that. Just give me one minute. restarting my uh, my slide deck so we can start in a minute It seems to work now. Let me share my screen again. All right, that should be better. Cool. All right. Well, thank you uh, for everyone for um, for being here uh, today, um, and thank you also to um, Monshad to uh, yeah provide us with the opportunity to tell a little bit more today about EY Finance Navigator, which is our uh, financial planning tool that we specifically designed for startups, scale ups, and, and small to medium enterprises. Um, today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what Finance Navigator is and also how are you going, how you can basically use this tool uh, as a way of calculating the impact of COVID-19, the financial impact of COVID-19 on your companies because it's a very useful tool to do that. Before I dive into the content and into the details, I would like to let you know that if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to uh, to use the Q&A functionality of, uh, of Zoom, uh, so you can put them in the chat functionality. Uh, I will present for about 30 minutes probably, which means that at the end we have about 10 to 15 minutes left to, uh, to answer your, uh, your questions. Maybe I'll already pick up a couple of them during my presentation itself, and if not, we'll, uh, we'll get back to your questions at the end of, uh, of the session. So again, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A functionality and then we will answer them for you. My name is uh, Wout Bollink. I've been working at uh, accounting and advisory firm EY in the Netherlands for about six years now. And I'm basically what you would call an, uh, an intrapreneur at EY, uh, which means that I have founded my own corporate startup from within EY, which is called EY Finance Navigator. And that's what I'm going to tell you a little bit more about today. Um, now, why did we start EY Finance Navigator? That's because of the following reason. Studies show that about one third of failed startups do not make it either because they fail to raise investment or they actually do raise investment, but they run out of cash because their spending gets out of control. Um, and that is something that me and a couple of colleagues uh, while working with startups and scale ups over the past couple of years also uh, recognized within our own network. So what we see is that many startup founders, they struggle a little bit with uh, perhaps convincing investors of the financial potential of their company. And they often also struggle a little bit with their cash management. And there are good reasons uh, that, that this happens because what we noticed amongst uh, startup founders that we've been working with is that many of them 
don't always have, let's say, uh, knowledge or, or experience working working with finance, which makes sense because if you start a business, well, you don't need to have a finance background. You don't even have to need to have a business background. You can basically have any type of background. But it would help, of course, if you have a bit of experience with uh, financials, if you want to you know, improve also the financial management of a newly incorporated firm. Uh, what we also see is that typically startups don't really have the resources yet to hire an external CFO to basically fill that, uh, that skill gap in terms of finance. And what we also notice is that many entrepreneurs simply lack time to work on their financials and sometimes also lack a little bit the motivation to do so. So many entrepreneurs, they don't necessarily find it uh, fun to work on their financials and they, they prefer to uh, work on customer development or perhaps product development instead of working on their, on their financials. Um, and, you know, for these reasons, apparently one in three startups don't make it eventually. But I think that these challenges are actually um, probably actually every entrepreneur recognizes these uh, these issues you know whether uh your successful business or you're still you know struggling a little bit to get there i think any startup runs into challenges re related to their financials in, in an early stage and for that specific reason we have built an online financial planning tool within ey which is called finance navigator so in essence it's really a planning tool that we specifically designed for startups and specifically also for um, entrepreneurs that might not always have a very strong finance background. And with our tool, uh, we support our users with um, convincing investors of the financial potential of their company to improve basically the chances, chances of being funded. And we also help them a little bit with their uh, cash flow projections and with their cash flow management. And of course, I'm going to uh, show you a little bit how the tool works and, and provide you with a short uh, demonstration of the software. And to do so, I'm going to introduce this fake uh, startup, um, startup founder, Steven. And uh, Steven is the CEO of his own startup and he's currently raising a seed round for his firm. But his firm is currently also being impacted by COVID-19. Uh, ask from the investor is that Stephen provides him with a five-year financial forecast and Stephen decides to use to build his financial plan his financial forecast back to COVID-19 on his business so what I'm going to do next is bring up the finance navigator software and show you how this specific use case could be uh, performed within our tool so you should be looking at the, the dashboard of the Finance Navigator software right now. And uh, the dashboard is really, let's say, the, the heart of our tool. So in this dashboard, you see all kinds of uh, financial metrics that we validated both with startups, but also with investors over the past couple of years to make sure that we include all the information in there, which is typically used by uh, startup founders to um, basically manage our company from a financial perspective, but that we're also sure that we include the information that investors look at when they screen new investment opportunities, so that this tool is also useful for fundraising purposes. And that translates into all kinds of different KPIs that we have, for instance, uh, gross margins. Uh, you see that we have included EBDA margin and sales. You see that we have included the break-even year of this specific firm. Um, we have, for instance, the customer acquisition costs in there. Uh, we have a graph on operating expenses. We show the funding need that is automatically calculated by our tool based on the inputs that you or that Stephen, our startup founder, is performing as a user. Uh, we include cash flow projections. We include the burn rate, uh, the lifetime value of a customer. We include market size metrics. And you can also um, visualize your uh, your team, so your personnel. Now, this dashboard is completely automatically generated based on the inputs that you perform uh, into the tool as a user of the software. Um, so this is really, let's say, an, an, an output of the tool, you could say. And if you want, you can also play around a little bit with the view of the dashboard, so you can also create insights. Uh, 
uh, in specific quarters or specific years or months. So uh, the impact of COVID-19 on, on this business, you know, you might want to change the view to a monthly view for 2020. So we can see a little bit what his projections look like for the, the coming months. Now, again, this is really an output side of the software. Um, the tool has a second type of output, which are the financial statements. So typically when you're in a fundraising process with an investor, they often ask you for forecasted, uh, forecasted profit and loss statement, forecasted cash flow projections, and sometimes also forecasted balance sheet. So let me quickly show you that one as well. So here we have the financial statements. And again, also the financial statements are automatically calculated. Uh, and also the financial statements can be shown on both a monthly and a yearly basis. So here we're looking at the income statement, for instance, or the profit and loss statement. And you can play a little bit with the overview and show it on yearly or monthly level like this. Now, the same applies to the balance sheet and two types of cash flow statements. So we have an indirect cash flow statement, which has been more of a traditional way of visualizing the cash flow statement. But we also have a direct cash flow statement, uh, which really shows you all the cash in and outflows that you have forecasted for your, for your company on, on a monthly basis. So this can be very, uh, very relevant for uh, cash flow management purposes of your company. Um, maybe also good to, to add is that for now, for the purpose of this demo, I have set the currency to US dollar, but of course you can change this to any currency worldwide. So by performing just a couple of data inputs, this complete dashboard is automatically visualized and the financial statements are also automatically calculated for your company form those data inputs then it's quite easy you just go through six different data input sheets so we have these six sheets um, and they help you creating your financial projections and then the dashboard and the financial statements are automatically calculated and visualized so you need to fill in uh, forecasted revenues forecasted production cost or cost of goods sold personnel operating expenses any investments that you might do in assets or any expected future financing streams. So by filling in these six data input sheets, the dashboard will automatically visualize in the financial statements as well. Now, probably it's good if I also show you a little bit on how to, how to input data then, so you get a bit of a feeling on, on how that works. Um, all the data input sheets, they, they work in the same way. So, as you see here for revenues, we have this big yellow bar at the top of the screen. And in that yellow bar, we ask you for some high level assumptions. And if you fill those in and click on add, the projection will be added to the table below. So for the purpose of this demo, I've already added a couple of revenue streams. So you have a bit of a feeling what it looks like, but you simply fill in these fields, you click on add, and then the projection will be automatically calculated and visualized in this, uh, in this table. Now that works the same for all the six data input sheets that we have here at the top of the screen. So we have for all these input sheets, this big yellow bar at the top, where we ask you for certain assumptions, you fill them in, and based on those, your projections are being generated. So that goes quite fast and quite easy. Of course, the type of information that we request, request from the user is a little bit uh, different in every data input sheet, but the process is the same. Um, so if you look at revenues, for instance, we ask you to um, select different business models. And based on the business model that you pick, the input fields will change a little bit and you can do your, uh, your inputs fast and easy. Now, as Stephen, our, our startup founder, has already um, been using our software, he has already added some revenue streams, which you can see over here. But since he is trying to, to raise some funding, he might want to make his projections a little bit more specific than just using the high level assumptions at the top of the screen. So what we've done is we've also allowed Stephen and allowed our, our users to be able to also make changes in the table of the projections itself. So just like you would also make uh, edits in an Excel, for instance. So, um, well, apparently Stephen has a 3D printing company 
and he has added some revenue streams, which you can see here at the left of the screen. And if we open up one of them, I can also show you how to make edits. So we've now opened up the revenue stream for 3D printers. And here you see, for instance, the number of units sold, the number of clients, or of days that clients take to. If you click on a random value within the table, the system will um, show a pop-up that helps you making edits and making your projections more specific for uh, perhaps fundraising purposes. So maybe Stephen wants to increase the pricing of his 3D printers a little bit. Well, then he would um, click on the price per unit in, uh, in this specific case for September, because in September, apparently he is launching his company. Before that, he doesn't have any sales. So he would click the price over here. And then you see that this pop-up appears. And what he can do, for instance, he can replace his pricing with a certain value or increase it or decrease it with a value or even with a percentage. And he can uh, apply that change for a specific month, a specific year, uh, the complete forecast or a specific time period. Um, so he can basically pick the, the year and the month until he would like to implement this change. So maybe uh, he wants to uh, increase his, uh, his pricing with a thousand dollars for this year only, then you would apply it like this and the data will be automatically saved. Oh. Um, small error in here. Let's try it in this way then. All right, now it's automatically updating. And you can see that the pricing has increased to $6,000. So it's quite easy to also um, make the data more specific and make, make edits as well. Um, and again, as I mentioned, this process works the same for all the different data input sheets. So this was revenues, but we also ask you to create projections for your cost of goods sold, for instance. Um, Looks like I have a little bit of a uh, slow internet connection, but okay, there it is, very good. Um, and well, you can see that for this one, we ask you for different different assumptions, but again, the process is exactly the same. So you fill in these, these assumptions, and based on those, um, the, the forecast will be added to the table below. Now, it works the same for personnel, for instance. Let's open that one as well. We again ask you for a little bit different assumptions, but the process is, is similar. Uh, so you add a job position, you add the, the, the let's say, the type of, uh, of position. So is it sales and marketing personnel or R&D, general, administrative personnel, maybe direct labor. You add the number of full-time uh, equivalents, so your, the number of uh, full-time employees, basically. Start year, start month, salaries, salary increase, some additional employee costs, if you like, for insurance or these kind of things. And then you would add it to your, to your forecast. Now let's go to operating expenses as well. So this is where you would add all your uh, costs that are not related to, uh, to personnel or production. Again, you can pick between different uh, types of expenses and you can add your projections in different ways. So you can either add expenses as a one-off payment or as a monthly payment, a yearly payment, or even as a percentage of your revenues. So again, different assumptions, same process. And maybe, you know, as a final one, also nice to show how you would uh, also add financing streams. So maybe, yes, yeah, Stephen uh, is planning to uh, raise a loan from the bank in the next year. Then he could pick, for instance, a loan over here, pick a start year, start month, the loan amount, uh, the interest rate per year, you can pick between different payback methods and based on that, again, the input fields will change a little bit. So if you would pay back monthly, for instance, you also input the financing period and then you could add this projection to your, uh, to your forecast. So I've said it before, but um, yeah, just as a summary, we have six different data input sheets and by filling those in, process works the same financial plan. The dashboard will be automatically calculated and, uh, and visualized, and the same applies also for your financial statements. 
Um, now, a, another functionality which is, I think, quite interesting to, uh, to show you as well is that, you know, let's say Stephen has built his complete financial plan with our tool, right? But he wants to, you know, uh, become a little bit challenged on his numbers and, and get a bit of advice on his numbers. But what he can do in that case is he can click the Analyze Plan button here on the top left corner of the screen. And uh, by doing so, the Finance Navigator software will run an algorithm uh, that basically checks Stephen's data to some uh, industry benchmarks that we have linked to the tool. And it also does some checks to uh, see whether the data makes sense as a whole. So let's click on this button to show you how that works. The system does its uh, analysis. Uh, well, apparently we have uh, one new notification. Let's have a look. Um, selling price is dropping significantly. Well, that makes sense because what I just did is I've increased the pricing for the 3D printers to $6,000, but I only did that for 2020, which means that after 2020, the sales uh, price is dropping to $5,000 US dollars again. And this message is making uh, Stephen aware of this of this price drop, so he can check whether that's actually what he wants. Um, maybe um, another example, which I always like quite a bit personally, that's uh, that's this one. So this message has been uh, triggered already before. And what we do in this specific message is we compare the revenue per employee of the business case that Stephen has built with the revenue per uh, employee of some top performing tech companies such as Apple and Facebook. And apparently a couple of years ago, Apple and Facebook, they had a revenue per employee of about 2 million US dollar, 3 million US dollar for Facebook. Um, and for Stephen, it's two and a half million already in 2020. So in that way, we try to help the user think a little bit about the fact that he might be a little bit too optimistic because apparently he thinks that he's already at the same level as companies such as Apple and Facebook in his first year of being in business. So in that way, yeah, we try to, to challenge the user a little bit in, um, in improving um, their financial plan and preparing them a little bit for questions that an investor might also ask them. So I think that's a nice functionality to, uh, to, uh, to show as well. Um, now, let's say Stephen has built his complete financial plan right, and he has done a check on his data using the analysis functionality on the top left corner. Then, of course, he at some point uh, is ready to share his financial plan with a potential, uh, potential investor because the investor asked for a five-year financial forecast. But what Stephen can do is he can click the export button over here, and then a very nicely looking structured Excel model is being generated, which Stephen can download and then share with the investor or basically any stakeholder that he would like to share his financial plan with. So perhaps his co-founders or perhaps the bank or basically anyone who is interested in the forecast number. Now that export looks like this, so I already have it over here. Um, let's go to this one. And you know, as you can see, it's really, um, structured, nicely looking uh, Excel model, which is again also um, built up in such a way that you can see it on a monthly or a yearly basis. So by clicking these buttons over here, you can play a little bit and you can have insights also um, basically, now this is, for instance, what the uh, the income statement or the profit and, st profit and loss statement looks like. Um, but maybe also a nice one to show is the direct cash flow statement, which is this one. And again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier already, here we really have all the cash inflows and all the cash outflows shown on a monthly basis. If you open it up over here, so this can be very useful also for cash flow management purposes of your uh, of your company. So that's the export. Now, um, one final thing that I would like to, uh, to show you, because that's also something that the investor requested from, uh, from Stephen for this uh, example case that we're taking right now. Uh, the investor also asked Stephen to assess the financial impact of COVID-19 on his startup. And that's something you can very easily um, perform with finance. So if you go to the scenario overview screen, 
purpose of your financial plan. So here we have the financial plan that I prepared uh, for the purpose of this demo up front already, right? Um, but what you can do, you can click on this small button on the top right corner over here. I can duplicate it and then a copy is being generated of the existing financial plan of Stephen. Now let's call this one our, our COVID-19 scenario. And what Stephen can then do is he can dive into this specific scenario and make some changes to see what the impact of COVID-19 is, is on his company. Um, now, maybe Stephen has done some market research and some, some validation with his, uh, with his clients, and he has figured out that COVID-19 is mainly impacting his sales projections. And he can very easily make those edits in his sales forecast. So, Let's dive into the sales forecast again. Um, and let's say that um, Stephen has figured out through this customer validation, the survey that, has, that he has done amongst his, uh, his clients, um, that he is expecting that he will lose actually 50% of his expected clients in the coming months because of COVID-19. Now what he, what he can do in that specific case, he can go to the number of clients in the table over here. Click on that one for, let's say, this year only, so September until December, in this way. Now, you notice that the number of clients has been reduced with 50%, and perhaps as um, uh, a second change that he would like to make as well is, normally his clients would pay him instantly, but due to the COVID-19 crisis, they now take a little bit longer to, uh, to pay him. So um, Stephen wants to, pay, uh, to change his payment terms a little bit, what he can do over here is apparently the number of days to had to get paid was zero but Stephen will replace this with one month payment term for this year only. so in that way by using a bit of um, customer validation a bit of market research he has been able to uh, to figure out what could be the impact of it on his financial projections and if you now go back to the scenario overview screen here on the top left corner uh, Stephen can make the comparison between the two different uh, scenarios quite easily. So here we have our um, initial financial plan uh, that he made before COVID-19 uh, hit at his company. And well, what you can see here, for instance, that the funding need that he was expecting was about uh, $365,000 uh, um, for his initial financial plan. But now he has made some changes which has been impacting his revenues quite a bit. And what you can see now is that in this new case, apparently the funding need for 2020 has increased to almost uh, $740,000. So in this way, um, yeah, being a Finance Navigator user, you can quite easily model the, the financial impact that COVID-19 might have on your company. Uh, on your funding need, on your uh, break-even point, on your cash flow projections. So it's quite easy to, um, um, yeah, to use that tool. Um, and, and that's all that I wanted to show for now uh, with respect to, uh, to the software. Uh, but I hope it's, it's, it's clear how this tool can perhaps help you also in, in your fundraising purpose, uh, process uh, or in the financial management of your, of your company and, for instance, calculating the financial impact of COVID-19 uh, on your firm. Now, I have a couple of slides left that I quickly would like to go through, and then we can move towards, uh, towards the questions. Um, so uh, in, yeah, in this demo, I've tried to, uh, to show you a little bit how the, the tool works, but I would also like to, uh, to show you a bit of the results that we've been having with this tool uh, so far. Um, we have started promoting this tool about one and a half year ago internationally. And since then, as you can see here, here on the, the bottom left corner, we have sold about 1,300 paid subscriptions uh, globally. Um, and that excludes any, any free accounts that, uh, that we also give away. So if you would include those, the number of users is actually uh, much higher. Um, we've had signups from over 80 different countries so far, and about 40% of our users are actually part of accelerator programs, incubator programs, or, or other st uh, startup support programs, because we want to you know, keep a tight connection to, uh, to the startup ecosystems. 
um, on this slide, you see a couple of a uh, couple of examples of those kind of programs that we uh, we have been working with. Some of them are more um, um, European focused and a bit more local, but we also have global programs in there, such as Startup Bootcamp, that might be a program that you've heard of, or Impact Hub, which is a, a global incubator for uh, impact startups. Normally, uh, Finance Navigator is actually uh, a pay tool, and for three months access, you pay 100 uh, US dollar, or about 90, uh, 90 euros. But um, I think we have a nice offering for you because what we've seen over the past couple of months is that, uh, well, COVID-19 has been having quite the impact on, uh, on society and, and economy, of course. Uh, what we have noticed over the past couple of months is that startups and scale-ups or at least small firms might actually be taking the, the, yeah, the biggest hit uh, of all because they often don't have that much funding available to, to get them through these uh, difficult times. And that's why we have decided to open up Finance Navigator for, uh, for free, temporarily. Um, so if you sign up before July 31st, you will get three months uh, free access to the tool, which would normally be 100 US dollars, uh, more or less. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's a, a, a nice thing to do. You know, you can just sign up and see, uh, see whether you like it. And as I showed you in the demonstration, it's quite easy to use our software to calculate the, the impact of COVID-19 on your company. And that's why we've also opened it up for free, uh, for free temporarily. Uh, so I would say take a, take a quick picture of, uh, of the link that you see in, in this slide. Um, if possible, we can also share the slide deck with you. So you, you have the link uh, as well, of course. Um, and if not, you know, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me or one of my colleagues and we can share the link with you as well. You know what, actually I will put this link also in the, the, the chat functionality of the Zoom call in, uh, in a minute. So, you know, feel free to sign up um, and, you know, make use of this, uh, this free offer. Now, if you want to know a little bit more on how we at UI are um, supporting startups and, and, and scale-ups, then feel free to, to reach out to me. You see my, uh, my email address on this slide. Or feel free to reach out to my colleague Noor in uh, Saudi Arabia, who is very active in the local startup and, and scale-up scene as well. And I've also included uh, the shared inbox of our, uh, of our Finance Navigator tool as well. So here we have uh, my colleague uh, Noor as well. So feel free to reach out to, uh, to one of us if you want to, you know, talk a little bit further. Um, all right. Again, if you have any questions, please use the, the Q&A and I'll be happy uh, to answer them. So let's see whether I can find the, the Q&A box in Zoom as well. Very good. I see we have a couple of um, a couple of questions. Um, so first one by Khalid. Can you change the currency? If yes, is there a currency converter? I, I partly already uh, answered this uh, this question a little bit earlier. So yes, you can change the currency. However, uh, there's no currency converter or anything like that. So let's say you would build a financial plan and uh, in, in US dollars and then change it to a different uh, currency like, uh, I don't know, Saudi uh, Rial, for instance, then we're not automatically uh, converting that to the local currency. It will just be uh, yeah, basically a change of, of, of currency without converting it. Um, then second question from Alpha. Uh, the input method is wizard based or requires training? Well, I've showed a little bit already on how the, 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 the way of inputting data works. Um, we have tried to, uh, to build it in such a way that also if you don't have a finance background, you should be able to, uh, to work with it. And if you actually open a new account, you will also be guided through that process of filling in the data. That's something I didn't show, uh, didn't show for now. Um, but again, it, yeah, it is meant to, uh, it's meant to, to, um, to work also for users without a very strong finance background. So I think you don't need training. And every time that we open an account, we also send you a small user guide on uh, yeah, trying to help you get up to speed basically with, uh, with the tool. Uh, then another question by Khalid. Can you add 
or change variables? If yes, could you add, for instance, Saudi taxes? Uh, yes. Um, in your, you basically have two sections where you can change some default variables. You have your company profile and you have your scenario settings. And in your company profile, you can change some settings that are specific for your complete Finance Navigator account. In your scenario settings, you can change some variables that only apply to that specific uh, scenario. And here you can, for instance, change things such as taxes, uh, the start year of your projection, uh, the industry that you're in, which is also quite important because based on your industry, we trigger different benchmarking information. Um, so yes, you can indeed change um, some default variables that apply to your complete financial plan or to specific scenarios. Um, Another question from Alpha. After three months, what will be the payment method uh, monthly, yearly? What is the amount? So probably good to know is that after your free account ends at three months, uh, we will not automatically renew your account. So we never automatically charge you or anything like that. A um, couple of days before your account expires, you will get an email from us telling you that the account will expire in a couple of days. Um, and once it has expired, you can log into the software and you end up in our payment screen and in that way you can basically unlock your account again. Um, and you can, uh, you can pay using, uh, using credit card for either um, one month access, three months access, or uh, one year access. The, the amount for uh, three months access, for instance, is 100 US, uh, US dollar. Um, for a year, it's uh, 300 euro, so that's about, I think, 330, 340 US dollar for, uh, for a yearly subscription. And as a final question for now, we, we had Fahad who asked me to keep the, the contact slides on the screen, so that's what I've, uh, what I've done. Um, and those are all the different questions that we have at the moment. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to still put them in the Q&A. Let me also put this sign up link into the chat functionality. Uh, let me see, how do I do that? Yes. All right, so. I've put the, uh, the URL into the, the Q&A now. I don't see it myself, but I hope that you guys do. It would be great if someone could confirm this perhaps. Uh, in the meantime, we have a, uh, a different, uh, or we have another question from, uh, from Alpha. Can we have multiple startups in one account of Finance Navigator? Um, I would not recommend you to, to do that because uh, one account is really used for one, uh, one company. Um, and that's also something that you will notice when you will uh, fill in, let's say, the default variables in your, uh, your company profile and your, uh, your scenario settings because we ask you for some company-specific uh, specific data. Uh, which is a bit hard to apply on different companies in one account. So one of the things that we ask you to do, for instance, is to include uh, an opening balance. So if you already have perhaps some, uh, some cash at the bank for your, uh, for your company, um, then uh, that's something you would include in your, uh, in your company profile, and that would apply to the complete account. So you cannot really have different startups or different companies into, uh, into one account. That's a little bit difficult. Um, okay, I see my uh, the URL has been um, has been posted also in this uh, Q and A chat functionality, so that's good. Thanks for confirming that. Um, all right, okay, and well, that's about it for um, uh, for the questions. Um, you know, if you still have any questions, maybe it's also good if I put our email addresses in this chat functionality as well, so you have that too. trying to add the email address. Okay, I don't know, it's not, uh, it's not working for now, but that's okay. 
Um, yeah, well, thanks everyone for um, uh, for for joining this uh, short webinar, this uh, short uh, session. Um, I hope it was uh, it was clear. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or to my colleague Noor. Um, you guys have access to the link where you can uh, you can sign up for your free uh, for your free access. So um, if you're interested in trying out the software, I would say you know give it a try because uh, it's free anyway at the moment. Um, so yeah, again, feel free to reach out to us for any further questions. Uh, and if not, I hope to see you uh, guys on our uh, on our platform very soon. So thanks again for uh, for being here uh, with me today, and um, I will close the call. Thanks again, guys. Cheers. Bye bye.